Hey everybody, I'm Justin with VMP Performance. A very special package just showed up at VMP. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and show you what's inside. I'm gonna do this with no tools because I'm just that excited. This is the new VMP Gen 3 R supercharger. It's actually gonna be a long time before you see this video, but I wanted to share with you what goes into designing and developing a new supercharger at VMP. It looks similar to our old VMP Gen 3. Same logo, same overall design and shape but it is all different inside. And there's even some external differences that I'm gonna talk with you about today that really show all the improvements we've been able to make from what we've learned since the original Gen 3 came out. This Gen 3R will be available for both 07 to 14 GT500 and 11 to 17 Coyotes that already have our VMP supercharger or even like a Roush supercharger. We have made over a thousand rear wheel horsepower with this setup ran low eights in the quarter mile. We've done a lot of impressive things with the Gen 3, but me not ever wanting to leave well enough alone, have been working on a new supercharger, and that is the Gen 3R over there. So right now, the Gen 3R is just a piece of plastic and a design, but the molds are being made, everything's coming together. We're gonna be doing a final test fit on a couple different cars to make sure that little stuff like bolt hole locations, tubes, um, things that are still adjustable before we finalize the machined version of the casting. Um, we're just gonna make sure those things are where we want them. So I wanna talk with you a little bit about some of the differences in the new Gen 3R. It's the same overall shape and design as the old Gen 3, it's just a heck of a lot more refined. So we were able to find tons of airflow in this new inlet shape. The rotors get fed a whole lot better. And of course we've done initial flow testing and test bench, test stand testing where a supercharger is actually spun by an electric motor and airflow is measured at the discharge, temperatures measured, a diabetic efficiency is mapped, everything. We've done that testing. We'll be releasing testing on an actual car very, very soon. The inlet's really important to me because we were able to make a lot of improvements there, like I just said, and we've already quantified those results. We just kind of um, made a bunch of other little tweaks besides that. You know, some bolts that were hard to get to on the Gen 3, some stuff we didn't realize is now taken care of. You know, this uh, this is kind of big and blocky where the EGR goes. If you have a GT500, you can see over here that it's much more lightweight and trimmed back. The pad for the EGR is just sticking out of the casting right here. It doesn't go down here or anything like that. We've still got all the same tube locations in the factory location. We've still got the map sensor bung for five liter. We've got these ports right here. We've got the EVAP valve right here. The bypass valve sits very, very low and very, very far back. And that is because we did not want it to occlude the inlet um, as much as it did before with the old Gen 3. That's one of the places we were able to pick up a lot of airflow. You can kind of see here, it's definitely a much straighter shot into the rotors. Now that bypass is tucked farther back. You know, you can see over here, this hump comes right up right there and there's really not a whole lot of room for the air to squeeze between the bypass valve hump and the rotor bearing cup. All right, so in the initial shot, you kind of saw the waffle pattern on the supercharger. Well, that's there for a couple of good reasons. The waffle actually adds a whole lot of strength to the supercharger casing itself. So 
inside of here are the rotors. They spin like as high as 25,000 RPM. They wanna have a very, very rigid case to live in. The tighter the clearances are around the rotors, the more power you make. So that's always a good thing, make more power. We've looked at all the clearances in the Gen 3 R very, very carefully, and they're optimized for both durability, reliability, and power production. The other reason that the external design changed a little bit is because we have a new partner in supercharger design and manufacturing, and that is Magnuson Products out of California. Based on the horsepower numbers we're expecting from this, it's gonna be a pretty awesome partnership. One of the other things I wanna talk about is the throttle body. So the original Gen 3 R had a custom bolt pattern for the throttle body that was quite a bit wider than stock. That's actually an adapter that we make to allow use of the KB168 throttle body. However, the Gen 3's native bolt pattern was a slightly wider than stock pattern. So if you wanted to run a stock throttle body, then you had to run an adapter plate. If you wanted to run another throttle body, you had to use an adapter plate. Just to kind of standardize things, we've gone back to the stock bolt pattern for the Gen 3R. That means any of the commonly available throttle bodies out there, the VMP67, the 69, VMP's new line of monoblade throttle bodies, the Cobra Jet 65, the Cobra Jet Mono, all of those will bolt right up to the VMP Gen 3R without any adapter plate. We do have a new gasket design to seal the throttle body to the supercharger because this opening is just freaking huge. Now you can see it's almost as large as the Gen 3. All right, so did we just go back to the stock opening just to make throttle bodies easier to bolt on? Well, yes, but there was another purpose as well we were able to get a much better short turn into the rotors by using a narrower throttle body pattern. So this turn right here is really critical. How you wrap the air into that inside rotor really determines how much power and how much boost and flow you're gonna get out of the supercharger. So we were able to optimize that with the Gen 3R design. We were able to optimize the long turn Everything about this new Gen 3R casting is different. It's an entirely new casting. Honestly, the only thing that's the same is the rotors to this point. We have just gone through this thing and made so many improvements that the dyno results are gonna be completely off the hook. You are, you are not gonna believe what this thing picks up. Like I said, we've seen the flow stand data we know what it's capable of now. When we get the first one on and get it on the dyno, it's gonna be awesome. So I wanted to show you guys a couple of things that go into a new supercharger design at VMP. Like I said, this design is probably about 95% finalized. I'm gonna be doing some test fitting on a couple different cars, particularly Track Attack, our 2017 GT. That's gonna cover all of our Coyote applications, and then I'm gonna test fit it on my 2012 GT500, which is gonna cover all of our GT500 applications. So when we do test fitting on a new product like this, we're looking for ease of installation for those of you at home that are gonna install it yourself, any problems that we may run into. We model all of this stuff in CAD, but there is nothing like putting it on an actual car to make sure that, you know, simple little things like bolt length um, work out properly. Like I can tell already, this bolt right here is gonna have to be a little bit shorter just because of how this inlet curves out before it goes back into the rotors. So that's the type of stuff I wanna figure out during test fitting. I'm gonna look out how it fits with the fuel rails, the crossover, EGR, all that good stuff. I'm gonna head over to the old shop where Track Attack is and I'm gonna get the Gen 3R test fitted on there. Hey everyone, I'm over here at our old shop with the Track Attack car, which is a 2017 Mustang GT. As you can see, I have a VMP Gen 3R installed on it. And this is another important part of test fitting everything, is actually getting it in a different um, engine and chassis package here to make sure that everything fits. Um, we're looking at everything, once again, from hood clearance to 
clearance up against the cowl, how easy it is to get to the bolts, um, all the little details that determine whether or not you're gonna be able to use this product and install it easily and, uh, and really just be able to work with it the way that we want you to be able to. <clears throat> Everything in here looks pretty good. I don't have a flashlight on me, but there's actually a ton of clearance back in here. So it is a little bit close right here. So this is gonna have to be trimmed, but I think it will still look good. Um, on the Gen 3 R design, we were actually able to improve some of the clearances back here where the EVAP valve is mounted. I, I know it's kind of hard to see in the dark here, but where there is a, uh, where there is one trade-off, there is often another gain. Um, going back to the stock throttle body bolt pattern uh, actually allows us to funnel the air into the rotors more efficiently and gives us a little bit more room around the throttle body to play with, both from a airflow perspective and a fitment perspective. So everything's looking really good here. We learned a couple of things like this little recess is actually gonna continue up to about here on the production design. There's some other little optimizations that I'm gonna pass along to the CAD modelers we're working with. And it is all coming together. The last part of this stage of testing and development is to fit it on my 2012 Shelby GT500, which still has like stock fuel rails on it and stuff just to check the clearances there. So I'm gonna go over to the shop tomorrow, um, get that blower off, get this one on and keep going with it. All right, so my GT500 is really dirty because I bought it with over 80,000 miles on it. It's pretty darn stock and it's a great candidate for test fitting the VMP Gen 3R. Now, it had a VMP Gen 3 on it, so the fuel rail crossover has already been replaced with a longer one. If you have a 1314, the crossover is already a little bit longer and it clears the Gen 3 and the Gen 3R. If you have a 07 to 12 VMP supplies high pressure fuel line with the Gen 3 head unit upgrade to replace your factory one with. It is exactly 16 inches long. I just, I know that because I just wrote the parts list for it. So anyways, something good to remember. I'm gonna throw a VMP Gen 3 R on here and see how it looks. This is the type of stuff that is really, really important when you're designing a new head unit upgrade. Does the fuel rail pressure sensor clear? Can you get to all the bolts? This right here has always been a special bolt on the Gen 3 because of how wide the 265 rotors are. Do we have all the connections we need? We've got the uh, line that runs to the bottom of the lower intake right here. There'll be a silver tube that's popped out of the housing right here that this connects to. This right here is really important. We do not want anybody to have to modify their firewall to get a VMP Gen 3 on their car. So this fits with no modifications. It's very tight, but you can still get back there with the right type of six millimeter U-joint style um, hex tool to tighten the very rear bolt. And just remember, that's the one you've got to put in ahead of time. Over here on this side, the intake air temperature sensor still has plenty of room but you are gonna to wanna to make sure this is plugged in before you install and bolt down the supercharger. You can see that in the case of 2011 up, there's gonna be an EVAP valve back here. That's gonna have plenty of room. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you install that ahead of time though. I even have a rotor plate and an old nose drive that I'm gonna slip right on there to see what a complete supercharger would look like. To install the Gen 3 on a GT500, there is a little modification required right here. We actually supply a special tool that goes on the end of a drill that mills that down. You just use a vacuum, you keep the mess to a minimum, and then you can put our low profile bolt in there, or you can just put the stock bolt back in there in case you don't have the low profile bolt. We got a supercharger.
it's not going to make any supercharger noises, but it is complete enough to give us a good idea of how the new VMP Gen 3 R will fit on an actual car. It will clear the factory hood, even with the hood liner. It'll tell, take any stock bolt pattern throttle body. You'll still use your existing cold air induction, whether you want to use a JLT, a PMAS, a 123, or like a 148 for higher horsepower levels. They'll bolt right up. Most of the time I recommend leaving the EGR valve on the tube when you're installing the Gen 3, but we've got it off this time just so we can check the bolt accessibility and some little stuff like that back here. I'm gonna throw these studs into this plastic blower and get the EGR test fitted on here. Like I was saying earlier, you almost just kinda of wanna spear the EGR valve and then And you didn't get a chance to see that because I had to use both hands, but then you just want to kind of push the blower into place. You can suck the EGR valve down with the two nuts. Make sure you got the gasket in there. Then you can bolt the supercharger down and then pretty much everything's wrapped up once you get your vacuum line connections made and your throttle body bolted up. This little clearance right here is extremely tight on Gen 3R because we want to get as much airflow as possible into the rotors. One of the things that's kind of neat about the R is that it's actually easier to install in a lot of ways, the way that we swept the casting back. Now that the EGR is farther back, you can get a ball drive back through here to bolt down that back corner. One of the things that I was thinking about doing for the Gen 3 R is providing that special six millimeter hex socket in the box. If that's something you think we should do, let us know, post in the comments below. We want to make it as easier for you to install the VMP Gen 3 R as possible. So including all the right bolts, gaskets, having videos on the installation is all part of what we do here at VMP. We'll be doing like an official install video on one of these as well. So you got to see a little bit of what goes into designing, developing and test fitting a new VMP supercharger line. We are going to have tons of dyno results on our YouTube channel and our partners YouTube channels. Make sure you keep an eye on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I also can't wait to get the TVS Queen's car back together with the new engine and the new VMP Gen 3R so we can get track results. I can promise you they will be nothing short of amazing. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and you hit the bell icon to get notifications when we post new videos or go live. I'll see you next time.